know we just started it. But we'll be about halfway through the chapter on Tuesday, so we'll have a quiz on Wednesday. So, simplifying rational expressions. Let me start with this. What is a synonym for rational in math? What does rational even mean? One word. Nope. Doesn't have to be whole. Jake? Doesn't have to be terminated, although anything that terminates is rational, but not all rationals have to terminate. Nope, you're, you guys are all thinking along the lines of rational numbers, right? Numbers that terminate or repeat with a pattern. That's what a rational number is. Technically, rational numbers, though, are also, and we don't teach it to you this way because then your calculator method doesn't really make sense to you guys, but any number that can be written as a fraction. So when we talk about rational expressions, we're talking about fractional expressions. I wish they would just use fractional. I don't even know if that's a word, but I wish that they would just use fractional numbers. Numbers that can be written as fractions. Would be, life would be much more straightforward that way, but we have this other word. So when you think rational, think fractional. We're going to have rational skills, which is what we're diving into today. We're going to have rational graphs, which is what we did yesterday. We're going to have rational equations that we're going to have to solve, which is going to come after the skills. And we're going to have rational word problems, just kind of like we do with every other type of function family. So you have dealt with rational expressions before. Let's take, I don't know, fifth grade, for example. You guys have said simplified rational expressions before, like 10 fifteenths. Now, I'm sure you just do that in your head without even thinking about what you're actually doing, but if I break down 10 into 5 times 2 and 15 into 5 times 3, those 5's cancel and the answer is 2 thirds. That's technically what you're doing, because anything divided by itself is 1 and just cancels. I'm sure you guys all think, oh, no, I actually would just, mentally you're thinking divide by 5, divide by 5, right? That's, that is what you're doing when you factor and cross out your 5s. You're dividing by 5. So you've done this before, and that's all we're doing today. We're splitting things up into factors, and we're canceling common factors, okay? Before we jump into these examples, I want you to look at this A through C in exercise 2, and then look down at exercise 4 and look at this A through C because there's really there's two categories of simplifying here what's the difference between the type in the first exercise and the type down here in the second exercise what do you see the differences between those problems and the way they're presented these are what and these are what come on Maggie Say it again. These down here. They're not all quadratics. Most of them are, but this one's not. A more generic term than quadratics. Polynomials versus monomials. Mono means one. So these are all single term divided by single term. These are all polynomials with multiple terms divided by polynomials, multiple terms. Okay? Um, so the way that we do them are, are a little bit different, although at the end of the day it is still factoring and canceling. I would argue we've already done A, B, and C. We kind of hit this in the exponent chapter. So in our exponent chapter, 3 over 6 being our coefficients would just simplify to 1 over 2. What do we do with x to the 5th divided by x to the 8th? Common base is being divided subtract the exponent. So what's 5 minus 8? x to the negative third. And then what's y to the sixth divided by y to the third? y to the... What are we doing with our exponents? Subtracting them. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And then via exponent rules, we wouldn't be done yet because we can't leave this negative exponent here. We have to move it to the denominator, so it would be 1y to the third up top over 2x to the third on the bottom, and that would be our answer. 
That's if you're thinking from the vantage point of exponent rules. I'm going to think from the vantage point of simplifying rational expressions, which truthfully, me as a person, this is the way I think of it, is the second way. 3 6 I still do as 1 half. But when I look at those x's, zoom in a little more, and I have 5 in the numerator and 8 in the denominator, my mind naturally says, okay, all five of these are going to cancel with five out of these eight, leaving how many in the denominator? X to the third. Whoops. And then when I look at my Y terms and I see six in the numerator and three in the denominator, I think all three of these in the denominator are going to cancel with three of the six in the top, leaving how many in the top? Three y to the third up top. So they both get you the same answer. And like I said, I personally think of it this way. I don't know if you guys do as well, because you've done this before. It's probably been since Algebra 1, but you've done this before. They both work. They're both legitimate. Um, but I do truly think of these not via exponent rules. I think of these via things canceling. Okay. So that's that. Now if I jump to exercise A here, which is just going back to basic numbers. If I break down 30, 36 is what times what? If I start factoring this. 36, what would you say? 6 times 6. Can I further factor either of these? Does 6 have factors? Yeah, what times what? 2 times 3, and then the other 6 also is 2 times 3. So there's my numerator broken down into prime factors, things that can't be factored any further other than doing 1 times themselves. And then how would you like to break down 120? What times what first? What do you think? 10 times 12, sure. 10 breaks down further into only 2 times 5 is my only option. 12 breaks down further into what times what? We have a couple options here. 6 times 2, sure, I heard that first from Logan. And then that 6 breaks down even further, so I'm going to leave my numerator the same. 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. My denominator is 2 times 5 times, and my 6 breaks up into 2 times 3 times 2, the 2 that was already there. Once it's broken down and factored as far as possible, now I can cancel common factors. 2 and 2, 3 and 3, another 2 and 2. And so what's my numerator? And my denominator is 10. Thank you, Mike. So that's, that's definitely not the most efficient way. You guys would try to find the greatest common factor, wouldn't you? Which is 12. You guys would probably do 12 times 3 over 12 times 10, and then your 12, you divide your 12 from both and you'd get 3 tenths. I know that's how you would do that, and that I'm not going to mess with that. But the thought process here is the thought process that you're going to have to follow when we're dealing with polynomials. Because you want to factor completely, factor completely, and cross out common factors. So in part B, what kind of factoring do we do in the top? What does that factor into? x plus 3x minus 3, which is difference of perfect squares factoring. What kind of factoring can we do in the denominator? G CF, take out a 2, you're left with x plus 3. You have to be good at factoring to be successful this chapter. We're going to be doing a ton of it. Not crazy factoring, not some of those advanced factoring things where you're grouping 3 by 3. We're not going to go there. But f just basic factoring with GCF, difference of perfect squares, difference of perfect cubes, sum of perfect cubes, and guess and check or splitting the middle term, whatever you want to call it. Once that's fully factored, are there any common factors in the numerator and in the denominator that can be canceled out? The x plus 3, correct. So your final answer is x minus 3 over 2. 
However, there is one little piece of info that you have to think about. This is always going to simplify to this. No matter what the x value, except for when x is one specific number, then this won't equal that. Anybody know what it is? Piggybacks on our process or our thought process regarding excluded values from yesterday. What do you think? Well, if I plug in 2, I'm going to get negative 5 over 10, negative 1 half. If I plug in 2, I'm still going to get negative 1 half. Is it 3? So I'm going to get 0 over 12 if I plug in 3, which is 0. If I plug in 3, I'm going to get 0 over 2, which is 0. So I get 0 and 0 no matter which way I do that, so that's fine. Jake? Negative 3. If I plug in negative 3 here, I'm going to get 0 over 0, which is undefined, right? If I plug in negative 3 here, I'm going to get negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. So I, I get undefined equals negative 3. No, it doesn't. How did you know that, Jake? Uh, because of this right here, right? Or this, but it's easier to realize it from the factor. Your denominator can't equal 0. So x plus 3 cannot equal 0. And when you solve that, that tells you that your excluded value is negative 3. So this is our answer except x cannot equal negative 3 also has to be mentioned. So yes, that expression simplifies to that, but only for all values except for this excluded one. Are you with me there? Okay, so don't forget to exclude it if it's an open response. Truth be told, there probably will be some other indication of it, so I don't think you just would have to blindly remember it, but on the regions, but for my purposes, we'll just get you thinking about that always when you finish one of these simplifying problems. Okay, jump down to A. So A has a numerator, which we would factor by either guessing and checking, or splitting the middle term if you are not great at guessing and checking. Does anybody know what those factors are already? Yes, x plus 7, x minus 2. Like I said, the better you are at factoring, the more solid you'll be at this chapter. And our denominator is the difference of perfect squares, Andy, so what does it get factored into? Good. Do any of these common factors cancel? X minus 2. So I'm left with X plus 7 over X plus 2. Thoughts on this? Okay. That's what I thought you might say. And that's what 90% of you would probably say you want to happen, but that doesn't happen. Here's why. And I'm going to probably say this a thousand times between now and June. You cannot cancel pieces of a polynomial. This X is, a, is just one piece of a larger polynomial. So is this X. You can't cross out a piece of a polynomial, okay? And I'll show you why it doesn't work. If I just cancel these out, then you're telling me you think that this always will simplify to 7 halves. And the truth is, if I plug in any number other than 0, I'm not going to get 7 halves, okay? For example, if x was 1, 1 plus 7 over 1 plus 2 is 8 over 3. It's not the same as 7 halves. You see that? Okay? So I know it's tempting because it's fun to just cross stuff out and just simplify things and make your life easier, but you cannot cross out pieces of polynomials. You know? You can only cross out the entire factor. So let me say this. If it was 7x over 2x, well, the factors of the numerator are 7 and x. So that is a factor there. See how that's not a piece of a larger polynomial? It's just a monomial, so that's fine. That's a factor of the monomial, and this is a factor of the monomial, so that will always simplify to 7 halves, right? If x was 2, it would be 14 over 4. That does reduce to 7 halves. That's okay. But that's because that's...
Go to B. Um, Lucy, can you factor the numerator for me? So you're doing the difference of perfect squares with conjugates, but what is the square root of 1? 1. So it's 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Do you follow? Okay. Gracie, what kind of factoring can I do in my denominator? Take out a 5 and I'm left with 2x minus 1. I forgot something on part A. We're going to talk about both of them in a minute. What cancels? 2x minus 1. So my simplified version is 2x plus 1 over 5. So what I forgot on A and what we're going to do on A and B now simultaneous, simultaneously is to say what the excluded values are. Any, the excluded values come from any factors, zeros, that was ever in the denominator. So it's easiest to go back and look at your fully factored version. What would make this a zero? Two, right? What would make this a zero? Negative two. So on this one, we have to exclude plus and minus two. And on B, look at your denominator. Once it was fully factored, what can x never equal there? That used to say 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 can never equal 0. So what does that mean? 1 half, good. And then divide by 2. So x can never equal 1 half. to the back. This is going to piggyback on something I went over on the homework already. Look at the top part A. Just, do you see how it's 9 minus 6 over 6 minus 9? 15 minus 3 over 3 minus 15? A minus B over B minus A? X minus 9 over 9 minus X? You see what's happening in all four of those examples? What will that always equal? Do the first two out. Simplify the first two numerical versions. You're going to get the same answer for both, and I'm curious to know what it is. Belle, you are not allowed to use your calculator. Okay. I'm just sort of teasing, but... Christina? Negative one. Because 9 minus 6 is 3, 6 minus 9 is negative 3, so we get negative 1. 15 minus 3 equals 12, 3 minus 15 is negative 12, so you get negative 1. So here's the rule. If you have two binomials that are the reverse order of subtraction as each other, they don't cancel fully. It's not just like cancel them and forget about them. It's that they will always cancel and create a negative 1 rather than just a 1. So when it's just a 1, you can just cancel them and ignore them. If it's a negative 1, you have to make sure you keep a negative in the mix. x minus 9 over 9 minus x, negative 1. Okay? So here's where this will come to light. In this next multiple choice, numerator, we can take out a 2. Denominator. How does that denominator factor Josh? What'd you say? This here. Your order's wrong. Because the 25 comes first, someone asked us in my class earlier today, if it could go either way, and it can't. If the 25 comes first, it has to be, the 5 has to come first. So 5 plus x, 5 minus x. So now, does anything cancel? 
what can happen. Yes, the x minus 5 and the 5 minus x sort of cancel, for lack of a better word. Okay? They're the opposite orders of subtraction. So x minus 5 and 5 minus x cancel, but we leave a negative in the problem to kind of reflect the negative 1. So your final answer, negative 2 over 5 plus x. Now, if it was open response, that's fine. It's not. It's multiple choice. Which one of these, take a minute to evaluate, which one of these options is the same thing as this? One, two, three, or four. Mm, I see ones and fours and a three and a one. You change it to four? Okay. Pick a random value for x, because I'm concerned with the number of different solutions. Pick a random value for x. Six. So that's going to be negative 2 over 11. Which one, when you plug 6 into, is also going to be negative 2 over 11? 1. 1's the correct answer. Both have the negative 2, and x plus 5 is the same thing as 5 plus x. Addition, you can switch the order around without negating, right? Addition is commutative. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. Subtraction, you have to worry about that. So they just made 5 plus x, x plus 5 because it's cleaner. Okay? And... Do this one. Take just... This one will be quicker than the other one. It's just more practice, but take a minute. Think about which one you would pick as your answer. Like Mike, if I could be like Mike. 